Hi everyone, this is going to be the most important fitness video you'll ever see as a beginner. Whoa, now the expectations are pretty high. Even at the risk of overselling myself and sounding too pretentious or too condescending, I promise you that this lame attempt at catching your attention has the only purpose of helping you. In the next few minutes, I'll be showing you an extremely disturbing scene I recently witnessed in a commercial gym. The shock was such that I had to stop my set and rub my eyes in disbelief. And the worst part about it was that this person was you. Yes, you, my dear viewer. Well, I mean, not literally you, but statistically speaking, this is most likely to be you. In sum, I hope this clip opens up your eyes to a reality you might be unaware of. In this short clip, I'm going to pretend to be the 20-something-year-old girl I saw work out in a commercial gym a few weeks ago. Please pay close attention to what she's about to do. I'll be narrating over the scene to give you some insights into what must have gone through her mind as she was performing these two exercises with weights. Ready? Go! Alright, so I'm gonna do a set of Romanian deadlifts. According to all the girls I look up to on Instagram, this is a great movement to develop my glutes and hamstrings. Which is great because this is the area of my body I really want to improve. Wow, this feels amazing. I'm so looking forward to seeing how my jeans are going to fit me by summer, now that I'm doing all these amazing lower body movements with weights. A great stretch! I love it! Well, it's official then. I'm gonna have to add Romanian deadlifts to my favorite lower body exercises. Hip thrusters, back squats, Bulgarian split squats, lunges, step ups, and from this day on, RDLs. Now that I'm done working my hammies and glutes, I'm going to superset RDLs with bicep curls. Even though I don't want to have muscular arms like a man, I find toned arms in a woman sexy. Besides, JessieFit98 says it's important to have a balanced all-around body with no flappy areas. And I totally agree. Plus, the majority of my summer clothes are sleeveless. I don't want to feel self-conscious about showing them in public. Okay, okay, back to the set. Nice and controlled. Hmm, okay, I feel how these curls are working their magic. I better stop before these get massive. Firm and toned only, that's what we're here for. I could have acted out the same grotesque scene with a guy, which I'll do right now. And you're probably thinking, well, what was the point of all that? Look, I'm gonna be honest with you. I tried to make videos to spread a message that would actually help people for real. Even if that means that I have to take you to awkward and uncomfortable places every now and then. Speaking of awkwardness, let's all play a little exercise I call What is wrong with that? As promised, now you're seeing the middle version of a similar clip with the same underlying issues than the first one. Once the scene is over, I'd like you to type in the comment section what the problem or problems were in those two clips I just showed you. Pause the video now and type what was wrong with the scenes. Go ahead. Alright, time to ruffle some feathers. If after reviewing the videos, you came to the conclusion that there was nothing particularly wrong or off about those two, I understand. This is the normal at commercial gyms. If you train there, this is what you are likely to see all year round. However, I'm afraid this is what is likely to happen to you. You'll be spending countless hours in the gym, committing time and energy multiple times every week, month after month, and you will still look the same as when you started. No life-changing body transformations for you, I'm afraid. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. If you did type in your comment that there was something wrong about the exercises, your results will be similarly poor. You, my friend, suffer from the same kind of blindness that is so pervasive among new gym enthusiasts. But in all fairness, this isn't your fault, okay? This has more to do with how physical education is taught at school these days. But let's not digress. The biggest obstacle beginners face nowadays on social media is that they fail to appreciate the important stuff that actually matters in training. Noobs will most likely see exercises and how amazing the people doing those exercises look without clothes. That's pretty much the gist of Instagram, isn't it? And given that the vast majority of people training in commercial gyms are beginners, what type of content do you think is going to be the most sought after on social media platforms? Exactly. 
What's the best exercise for this muscle or body part? Which variation is better to target this muscle or body part? Which are the best exercises to get bigger, stronger, you fill the blank? Look, fitness personalities know all this and exploit it to their advantage. And I don't blame him. I don't hate the player, by the way. Big influencers boast gigantic follower numbers because, among other things, they are pretty good at mass-producing the type of content beginners look for. After all, YouTube is like a marketplace run by supply and demand and the most searched questions pertain to exercises. So, a never-ending stream of videos about movements and variations of these is what you'll more likely end up finding here. The issue is that you can spend thousands of hours watching these kind of videos and you'll still have no idea how to train in order to get the results you want. The good news is that there is a way to fix it. So, what was wrong with those two clips I previously showed you? What are the things you need to be able to identify to ensure progress and growth in your training? The two main problems that have to be addressed are underloading a movement and making a half-hearted level of effort. Let's rewind and take a look at the first superset once more. Why in the world would you use the same load to perform Romanian deadlifts as you would bicep curls? That makes no sense at all. The first exercise is a multi-joint movement, a hip hinge to be more precise. For you to do a loaded hip hinge, your body engages very large chunks of muscle mass. The primary movers are the hamstrings, the glutes, and the spinal erectors. However, the upper and middle back also play a key role as they have to bear the load that is connected through the arms, not to mention the high muscular engagement of the midsection to stabilize the athlete's center of mass. In sum, the entire posterior chain plus other muscle groups are recruited. On the other hand, you have a bicep curl a single joint movement that primarily works elbow flexion, a function that almost exclusively requires the biceps and the forearms. If you were to analyze and then compare how much muscle mass is used in each movement, the difference is massive. Thus, it is inexplicable to use the same load for a movement that recruits much larger muscle mass. If the person in the first clip really wanted to develop the glutes and hamstrings for a more aesthetic lower body, she would have to, keyword, overload this movement. In most cases, just doing the movement is not the end goal. Doing Romanian deadlift is not automatically going to give you that juicy, rounded butt you want. But if a bigger butt is the real goal, that is hypertrophy of the gluteal muscles then she must present a sufficiently challenging stress to the muscles involved. But as you can clearly see in this clip, she undoubtedly underloads the hip hinge. Visible signs of effort are nowhere to be found. She only stops the exercise because she wants to, not because she has to. Therefore, the body has no incentive to adapt and change, no muscle growth, no bigger, juicier, more rounded butt. Sorry, but the stimulus wasn't disruptive enough. Avoiding this rookie mistake is crucial for your long-term success. And the second biggest mistake to avoid is something that I already touched upon, volitional failure. Simply put, this is the act of bringing a set to an end just because you want to or feel like it. The opposite to that would be muscular failure, which is reaching the point where you can't physically perform another rep because the muscles involved are no longer able to produce enough force to overcome the resistance. Another way to say it is that your muscles are giving you the middle finger. Unfortunately, volitional failure is the default setting in a noob's mind. If your goal is to pack on some muscle and get stronger, you must learn to tap into a visceral, warrior-like survival threshold more often, especially once you have decent enough form in each of the movements in your program. I'm not saying that all the sets have to be taken to muscular failure, but there have to be some clear and visible signs of struggle and discomfort in your sets. Over time, you'll get better at gauging where that line is. The higher the load, the further you could stop before reaching failure and still make great gains. The smaller the resistance, and thus the movement, the closer you can push your body to that line or even cross it. Although a bit simplistic, this is a good general rule of thumb for beginner lifters. Alright, I hope you didn't take it too personal, but I have to bring the topic of this video close to you so that you would take this message home. I just don't want the subscribers of this channel to be making those type of rookie mistakes when they train in the gym. Please don't be that girl or that guy. Check out these two videos, I think you're gonna like them. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to click on the bell to get notified every time a new video goes live. Stay fit, stay strong, peace.